Namaste and welcome to the Achievers and Changemakers produced by today's Youth Asia. In the TV show Achievers and Changemakers, we bring inspirational figures from around the world who have contributed to humanity. My name is Rosina. In today's episode, we are featuring Mr. Nares Kukriza and Mr. Sivan Vatia, who has been awarded with today's Youth Asia's Youth Achievers Award. I'm very, very happy to have received this award. Extremely delighted and excited. Um, I am really happy to see you guys work the way you guys work, like towards bringing up the youth of the nation. Um, it's it's an honor uh, to have received this award. Seriously, thank you so much. I'd like to thank uh, respected ma'am and. Uh, uh, youth Asia, I think uh, it, it really indeed is an honor um, for you to recognize uh, us, people like us who just uh, do what we love to do and uh, to see that probably there's some change that's we're, uh, that's we're bringing about uh, in the society. Uh, thank you so much for the award. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's very, very uh, Nice. <laughs> A few to have. Yeah, Haruli, uh, you designer ma uh, award uh, prapta garnu bo. Uh, Haruli, hamili dhanne baad dinai parsa. Kine ki jo yada parisharam baato, mihanat baato, hamili yada mitho phal prapta honsa bhani kura pani. Aili uhaaru ko jun mihanat le yu kura hamili sabai lai laksa. र मुख्य कुरा अहिले विश्वमै र विशेष गरेर नेपालमा युवाहरुको जुन एउटा प्रतिभा छ क्षमता छ र त्यो युवाहरुको प्रतिभा र क्षमतालाई राज्यले जसरी प्रयोग गर्न सक्नु पर्थ्यो युवाको नीतिगत हिसाबले स्पष्ट रूपमा निर्माण गर्न पर्ने हो र यो अहिले सम्म जुन भएको छैन अथवा जति हुन पर्थ्यो त्यो हुन सकिराखेको छैन त्यसैले हामीले अहिले छिटै युवा परिषद गठन गरेर जुन नेपालकै सन्दर्भमा 1 करोड 40 लाख को हाराहारीमा नेपालका युवाहरु बेरोजगार छन् नेपालका युवाहरुको समस्याहरु छ रोजगारका समस्या छ त्यो सँगसँगै स्वास्थ्यका समस्याहरु छन् यसलाई समाधान गर्नको निम्ति हामी मन्त्रालयको तर्फबाट एउटा युवा परिषद गठनको लागि प्रक्रिया थालनी गरेका छौं र जस हामी युवाहरु साच्चैकै एउटा राष्ट्रलाई राष्ट्र निर्माण गर्ने राष्ट्रलाई सुन्दर र सक्षम बनाउनको निम्ति युवाहरुको क्षमतालाई हामी सबैले प्रयोग गर्नुपर्छ चाहे त्यो कुनै पनि क्षेत्रमा जुन क्षमता छ त्यो क्षमता राज्यले प्रयोग गर्न पर्छ र यो भविष्य भनेको युवाहरुको हो र युवाहरुको भविष्यलाई निर्माण गर्नको निम्ति हामी सबै एक्जिट हुनु पर्छ This is your first visit to Nepal what has your experience been like I'm really really I was really excited before coming here I'm like yeah going somewhere new cuz uh, traveling is something which we absolutely love but then it's it this experience here has Turned, uh, turned, th turned things beyond traveling. The experience has been extremely warm. I mean, everybody has been uh, warm, hospitable, and extremely supportive of what we are doing, which is very, very beautiful and delightful to see. And Where did your passion for fashion come from? Well, to be honest, uh, this, I think this will be the first time it will be going on air. Uh, uh, when the first time uh, Diana Hayden became the Miss World from India, in 1997, 
I don't know why, but then I started drawing croquis and uh, fashion figures. I, it probably, probably then I realized that this is what I want to do. Yeah. Other than that, it's before that I always wanted to get into probably architecture, interiors. But yeah, basically being bad at math sort of <laughs> turned those fields away from me. <laughs> this has been your first visit to Nepal. What has your experience been like? The experience has been very warm, and uh, the hospitality here is excellent. I mean, uh, every since the time we've landed, uh, everyone who's been uh, we've been with from this country have been so so loving and supportive. It's 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 excellent. It's a great feeling. You've received the Today's Youth Asia's Young Achiever Award. What are your thoughts on that? I'm very delighted and I feel extremely honored. Uh, uh, honestly, it's. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm rather grateful to the people of Nepal and today's Youth Asia for yeah, considering us uh, uh, and th I'm thinking that we've made a change in some sort of a way uh, to the society of this subcontinent and uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's really nice, it feels really good. Where did your passion for um, fashion come from? I think uh, it's something that uh, probably I knew as uh, since childhood that I uh, was I did have a creative bend of mind, uh, wasn't too inclined towards academics and I think it was only a matter of uh, time that uh, uh, my graduation happened to be in fashion and then it resulted in studying further in the same field and then we started, we ended up launching our own label. So one led to, the, to another and it happened. Um, where do you see yourself five to ten years from now? Five to ten years from now, we would uh, love to see ourselves um, as uh, probably uh, Asia's first uh, luxury swimwear and holiday wear brand. Uh, I think this part of the world is predominantly a resort climate and uh, we lack brands that understand this. Uh, Brands are supposed to be based on lifestyles uh, and not occasional wear and that's one understanding uh, with which we've started our brand and we would really like it to see uh, serving uh, people from this part of the world with their needs uh, for holiday, travel, cruise, resort, spa, honeymoon. Um, lastly, there are a lot of youths who are interested in fashion who want to take up the fashion as a career. Uh, what would you like to say to the youth who aspire to become like you? I would just say um, believe in yourself and you you have to do what you really want to do. I mean, do what makes you happy. Uh, do not, uh, I think the moment you stop running behind money, money starts running behind you. So do what you love to do more than anything else and everything else falls into place. Your fashion industry and our hospitality industry, both the industry meet the people and where do you think both the hospitality and fashion industry meet? I think that's, uh, first of all, it's a very good question. Uh, fashion and hospitality industries are two industries that are very complementary to each other. Uh, even more so from our perspective because uh, we, uh, our unique selling proposition for the brand is the fact that it's a holiday centric brand which is what makes um, hospitality industry and fashion industry even closer. Um, how I feel they both go hand in hand is that uh, fashion can almost be treated as a service that hospitality industry provides to its customers who come uh, either for a vacation, for a honeymoon, uh, or a business traveler, uh, or uh, let's say a city traveler. Uh, hospitality industry uh, apart uh, can can further be divided into uh, let's say leisure business city uh, uh, or honeymoon hotels and in all of these segments fashion finds its own uh, placement we have lots of beautiful fabric over here and then you people are here uh, this time no? uh, do you think uh, uh, you are going to do any fashion show according to your collection with our Nepali fabric is one thing. And then what do you think? Are you going to uh, do that? We uh, finalized the textiles that we would like to use for the next collection. Uh, you will see it in the form of a collection. Apart from, uh, of course, once the collection is completed, it will be uh, showcased um, on, a bigger, on a slightly bigger platform like uh, Lakme Fashion Week in Mumbai. 
uh, which is where we showcase every season. Uh, as soon as the collection is out, uh, I think media is online media is a very fast way uh, for uh, all of us to communicate with and for for you to see what we do, what we will do with those textiles back in our country. Uh, uh, incidentally, Lakme Fashion Week uh, last year uh, also started Lakme Fashion Week TV, uh, which is an online television channel. That means that while Lakme Fashion Week is going on, you can watch the shows live uh, on the internet uh, from here. So as soon as I think the collection, uh, we make that collection, uh, we will definitely let uh, all of you guys know. And on the day of the show, you all can watch it live. I would like to ask, how do you see the fashion industry in Nepal? I just feel that uh, you guys should uh, like understand the potential of this country where uh, your fabrics are excellent, Kashmir and Pashmina and Dhaka, hemp and all these fabrics. M maximize the utilization and uh, I mean that is a USP which will become very important for whoever like put, puts together in a collection beautifully. Street fashion is uh, one of the main things by which you start recognizing that a country is ready for serious fashion because it means that uh, masses are open to understand fashion and they're receptive to uh, an industry like fashion. So the moment you start seeing the people on the streets are doing something different with themselves and they're putting thought, money, action in uh, making themselves look better than the others, it means that there is a demand and there is a need and there is an aspiration uh, in that region to uh, cultivate uh, a, a good sense of fashion. So you can easily see that. I mean, even when we were coming from airport until the hotel, it was so easy to spot good-looking, you know, girls and boys and, you know, people putting a lot of attention to themselves and the way they dress. That's really good. I think it's, it's, it forms a very good base for all of you guys to start taking fashion seriously. As a child, what did you aspire to become? As a kid, I, that was clear that I want to get into something creative something where I get to be hands-on. Uh, I wanted to be probably an architect or an interior designer or something of the sort. Yeah, that was my aspiration as a kid. What about you? What profession uh, I wasn't very clear about. I did know that I had a creative bent of mind and I was terrible at maths. So <laughs> I knew that, uh, you know, somewhere that I have a creative bent of mind that I had to exercise. But I think uh, I, I always had a sense of, um, I always loved to surprise people. And even as a kid, you know, within your own family and your friends, I would always wanted to do something different, something that would surprise people. And uh, I knew that whether I use that in fashion or I use it in architecture um, or product design, um, it's one common factor that was very close to me that I could use. Uh, it did happen that uh, as I mean, as I grew, I, I knew that fashion was probably the right field for me, and uh, and it it just fell into place, you know, that fashion was what I was, what I wanted to do, and I ended up doing. Today's Youth Asia has been leading in exploring and implementing innovative ideas to raise the voice and concerns of youths and responsible leaders. Well, hard work is required, but beside that, what would be other essential factors? Well, I'm entering the hospitality industry, so I would like to have some suggestions as to how That's we can uh, expand these ideas to other places as well. What do you think are the major pit, pit holes in our uh, tourism sector? In 2008, TYA established three prestigious awards, Young Achievers Awards, Excellence Achievers Awards, and Ever Summit Award to honor leaders, change makers, visionaries, and dignified achievers from around the world. Young Achievers Awards aims to honor young national and global leaders, change makers, and achievers who have dared to dream and have made noticeable contributions to societies at an early age. The award also aims at encouraging many more young people who demonstrate the potential to become an influential leader and role model in the future, to take further innovative and constructive initiatives 
to better shape our present and the future. The award is offered to four young achievers under the age of 40 every month, thus acknowledging the works of 52 young leaders every year. Mr. Neem Ratna Bajracharya, a celebrated photojournalist at Himal Media, is receiving Young Achievers Awards by His Excellency. Luna Shrestha Thakur, Country Director of Change Fusion Nepal, is receiving Young Achievers Awards from Honorable Chief Guest. Excellence Achievers Awards aims to honor the eminent national and global leaders, change makers, and dignified achievers from diverse fields who have offered noteworthy contributions to their societies, nations, and to the world. In addition to the recognition of their outstanding achievements, the award is also a gesture of respect and gratitude from the younger generation to our predecessor generation for their good works. The award is offered to four achievers of the age 40 and above every month, thus honoring the contributions of 52 leaders every year. His Excellency is awarding Excellence Achievers Awards to Mrs. Santi Chadra, Director of Nepal Women's Skill Development. Thank you very much, Dean. This is just a great honor. I really wasn't expecting it. Thank you very much. The next Excellence Achievers Awards goes to Mrs. Indira Mandar, President of Religion and Peace Academy Nepal. Never Summit Award is the most prestigious award conferred from Nepal to recognize global figures and organizations who have successfully and significantly contributed to the world at large in one of the four distinctive areas, humanitarian works, works in peace, justice and democracy, political leadership and economic leadership. The award is offered to two individuals or organizations every year. With this, we have come to the end of today's show. Thank you very much, Mr. Nares Kukreza and Mr. Sivan Vatia, for being with us and sharing with us your insightful thoughts and ideas. Thank you for being with us. We look forward to your feedback. Our email address is youthtya at the rate gmail.com. We will be back next week. At the same time, have a nice week. Namaste.